So we operate in Kingston and St. Andrew and its surrounding communities. So we do have operations in St. Catherine as well. And we have plans to expand island wide. Please don't forget to mute your mics. All right, so how affordable are we? So if we look at this table, this table compares the cost of existing driving schools in Jamaica along with Mother Teresa's prices. So we know about JAA, you know, they're one of the more popular driving schools and Glenn's driving school as well. So their prices start at 2,900, 2,100, and they go up to quite a few thousand dollars, like 60,000, $68,000. While for Mother Teresa driving, we start at $2,000 and our most expensive package is $38,000. So we offer a regular package, which includes 10 lessons and free materials, the exam and road code book. Uh, the cost for the automatic package is 15,000, standard is 20,000. I mean, you can check our Instagram for our prices and stuff like that. All of this information is made available. We have the super fast package, but if you don't feel as if 10 lessons are sufficient, 20 lessons must can do you for the exam and you get your free materials. And I mean, automatic is 28,000 and standard 38,000. We have the executive service package, which includes pick up and drop off. So if you want us to pick you up at your home or workplace, um, that special service is offered as well. And we have night driving classes. So a lot of times learners are afraid of, you know, their first time driving at night being alone. So for that class, for that package, you get three lessons and we offer pick up and drop off complimentary because, you know, um, the safety concerns at night and we wouldn't want you to be taking bus home if we're doing that lesson. And we offer refresher courses. So if you have your lessons already and you just want to touch up, um, you can contact us. And we have vehicle rental for exams. So let's say you didn't use us um, throughout for your lessons, but you need a vehicle to take your exam, say your parents taught you, then you can rent a car for 4000 or a van from us for $6,000. And we have materials only. So let's say you just want to prepare for your provisional license exam. You can purchase the materials only where we have an exam question bank, 500 question and answers, road code book, and road signs with MCQs. And we also offer mock exam services. So if it is that, you know, there is this belief that is held by many Jamaicans that if you're going to depot them, I'm going to fail you. So if you have that fear, we can arrange for a mock exam for you. Um, we'll take you through the entire exam process. So you don't have to feel like you don't know what to expect. Um, we actually use the same exam route that the Swallowfield Depot uses. And that depot is based in Kingston. And we also sell car accessories. So we have cars for rentals and as a bonus, all our students get 15% off on for their first car purchase with MT Partner, the car dealers. And these are pictures of the car accessories that we have. So how to apply for a provisional license? Let me just check the chat. Seen a message. Is it, is it possible that you recently lost your job? And you're trying to figure out how to Okay, so I'm going to put it there next to I'm going to try to share it again. Hopefully, they'll be able to see it. What you know as boss teacher. No, this is this this screen that you're at is literally my class. 
Uh, can you guys mute your mics, please? I'm hearing some kind of thing about the recently lost job. Can you guys see the screen now? Uh, can somebody unmute to let me know if you can see the screen or not? Yes, yeah. I'm seeing the screen. You're seeing it? All right. Thanks. All right. So as it relates to the provisional license or your learners, how do you apply for it? So in January 25 of this year, the government changed the process as it regards to applying for your provisional license. So what is required of you is you will go first to the exam depot of your choice and you will sit the multiple choice road code test. So usually what would happen before is that you just go straight to the tax office and you go with two passport size pictures stamped and signed by a JP and you get your license once you pay your money and that's that. But now you have to take a road code exam which um, it's not really difficult, um, but it does have quite a high failure rate, especially since it's, its inception. So the new process applies to applicants who want a learners or who operates a motorcycle. So application forms are available at all the examination depots the tax offices are from the website and I have the links here. You can take them down. The Ministry of Transport and Mining, www.mtm.gov.jm and the Tax Administrative Administration Jamaica website, um, www.jamaicatax.gov.jm. The completed application form along with three identical certified photos. So that means three passport size pictures signed and stamped by a JP and get all three of them signed. Should be submitted to the depot of your choice and that is where you'll be going to take the road code exam. So basically get the application form, fill it out, get the the three pictures taken and signed by the JP, then go to any depot of your choice and sit that road code exam. Of course, you have to prepare for the road code exam. And where you, once the candidates have passed the, the road code test, they will make a note on your application form and then you'll be able to go to the tax office to get your actual um, provisional license or your learners. And the fee is 1800 I'm not sure if that, if that price has changed, but um, this is as recent as, I mean, March 2020. So unless any changes <laughs> happened, uh, yeah, that's the cost that I, that I know of. Oh, yes, and in the event that you fail the road code exam, you will be able to set another date to go and retake the exam. So you don't have to worry about being barred from not um, passing the exam. So you'll get a chance to sit it again. So I get this question a lot. What's the difference between a private license versus a general license? So basically both of them are good. So we always say that the general license is good, but it depends on what it is that you as a person need. So if you are only interested in driving a car, just a regular car, you, know, you have no aspirations of driving no coaster bus or anything of that sort, then a private license is, is, is good and well for you. And the process of getting the private license, all you have to do is just set the road code test and you just do a, simply, a simple um, yard test and a road test. And uh, for the general license now, if you want to drive, the, they call the general license a big license because if you have this license, you can drive anything at all you want to drive. And you need to get um, a special kind of general license to drive a public passenger vehicle and um, probably like a heavy duty truck and stuff like that. So for the general license,
things now, you need to know more than just the road code. So you will also get a mechanical exam, which is the same, it's, it's a similar multiple choice exam, but it's just testing your mechanical knowledge. So what, what you know about the car, the car's engine, how it operates and stuff like that. So now we're going to go into road signs and road safety. Oh, I have a raised hand. You can go ahead. So for the private um, license, you don't have to do the mechanical test? No, you don't. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, so basically, um, so we're looking at this picture and it's basically showing you the right um, way to overtake a vehicle in terms of we're looking at the road marks, right? So when you're on a road, you'll realize that on some roads, the line in the middle, you know, that white line in the middle or the yellow line in the middle of the road i know in jamaica it's white so it's it can be straight it can be like a solid white line going straight down or it can be what you call this dotted in a sense so like for example here with a tick yes so um basically what this is saying is that once it's a solid line like this picture you should not overtake. And once the line is, uh, I'm going to refer to it as dotted, um, you can overtake once it is clear, of course, to do so. You know, again. Mm -hmm. So for this, I mean, we all know this rule. It's a general, it's the first rule, and trust me, it's on the road code exam as well. <laughs> They'll ask you about uh, wearing a seatbelt, and we all know that wearing a seatbelt is, is always important. Once you go into a vehicle, I know some of us, when we take a taxi, we're not, we're not always putting on a seatbelt, but once it is that we are considering to be the drivers now, it has to be, it has to become something that is important to you to always wear a seatbelt and to always encourage people. Once they come into your car, once they come into my car, I say, listen, put on your seatbelt, please. It's just a, it's a safety thing and you can get a ticket for it. As well. For this one now, so this is saying, always stop at a stop sign so a lot of times i've seen accidents happen on the road and it's because somebody is like they never see the stop sign and they're just gone straight through they, they don't even stop for the person then just go straight cross so, so even if it's that the way is clear please to stop once a stop sign is on your side because the, you don't know if another driver is coming very fast and it might cost you a lot because that driver might just hit you on gone board and business and that going to rate up your insurance, mash up your vehicle, and you have to go repair your own vehicle and all of that. So to avoid things like that from happening, to avoid all of that, just stop once you see a stop sign. Slow down, stop, even if it's um, at night, still slow down and go through. No to stop for too long. Like if, if it's night, we can understand. Like no stop for too long. So for this now, this is when um say you're driving on a highway and you want to make a U-turn to go somewhere else or whichever, because where you're going is probably on the other side of the road. So once you're making a U-turn, you have to wait for a sufficient gap before making that U-turn. So a lot of times people don't wait until them see sufficient gaps or whichever. Them just start push out them vehicle 
and it causes a lot of traffic one it can cause accidents so you know the right thing to do is to wait for a sufficient gap before making that u-turn And guys, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to interrupt me. Um, you can just unmute and say what you need to say. I can't necessarily check the chats at the moment. Uh, this one. So avoid driving when you are tired. So in the road code book, it actually states that if it is that you are tired when you're driving, it's best if you find a nice quiet space to just pull aside and rest. And I can even admit it when it when I got my license first when I first got my license. My first accident was because I was driving and I was tired. I was coming I was coming home at, in after four in the morning and I just fell asleep around the stairs and went right into the railing on the highway so it's, it's a very serious thing you might feel like you can tough it out but trust me it's better if you just pull aside pull pull to the side of the road and rest you can go ahead with your question good evening everyone uh, i have a question in terms of the road code test um the list of questions that they give can you find it in the general um Driver's book. The list of questions that they give for the road code. Yeah, the multiple choice questions. Is it found in the general um, driving book? That's the one that um, that the government issues. Yes. The red one. No, yeah. I don't. Think so. so basically, that book only covers content. So okay. You so in pr pr practice questions we have materials with practice questions if you're interested for the road code test yes oh okay all right thank you all right all right so this is for when we're when you're parking a vehicle so angle parking means parking a vehicle at an angle at either 30 degrees to 90 degrees angle. I'm sure you guys are familiar with um, parking lots with this setup. So these are steps that you can follow. You can turn on your turn signal. So your indicators are very important when it is that you're driving on the road, whether you're turning or you're parking, you must use an indicator whether somebody's behind you or not. Like, let it just become a, a habit. And when you're taking the driving exam, when they take you on the road, use your indicator, your hazard lights, because they grade you for things like that. You know, the fact that you are aware of other motorists on the road, because when you use your indicators, that is indicating to me as a driver behind you that, hey, you're going to make a left turn or a right turn. So if I, were, if I, if I had it in my intention to overtake you, then I know that if you're going to make a right turn, I can't just go overtake you on your right like that because I would cause an accident. So, and it's important that you, you use the right indicators because I remember one time I was on the road and there was a taxi man that was in front of me and he had on his indicator but he was indicating that he was going to turn left so i was going to overtake him on the right and the man turned like the side for me a right turn so i had to swing over and you know i just pulled on my windows and let him know that listen you had on the wrong indicator and you know taxi man love course but he understood and he sister say him did really have on the wrong indicator so he would have been wrong but then you have a lot of taxi men on the road who don't have insurance so it's not like you can't get anything from an accident from them so at all costs avoid accidents so when you can see the left side so basically when you're when you're doing a turn like this, so you come close, and I have a, a, a video at the end of the of this presentation that we'll watch together um, as a regards. So when I get to that, 
So this, I mean, a lot of us don't necessarily follow this, especially once you get um once you get to the, the ranks of being an experienced driver, you tend to to still use your phone while driving. But I would still encourage it, um, encourage you not to use your your phone while driving. I mean, I only use my phone if I if I need GPS or something like that. But if somebody I don't message while driving, that's a no no. Like I tried it once and by the time I looked down and look up, I was so close to a next man's vehicle. So really and truly don't um don't 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 participate in such risky activities. And you know once I see this question on the road code exam. It's a definitely no. It's a definite no. No type of use of any mobile devices um, once you're on the road. And a lot of times it's has caused um, many accidents. So your road code exam will include a lot of these traffic signs that you must know. So you must know what they mean. Um, and I mean, they're kind of easy to just go through and study. So like, for example, this one, and some of them actually have the meaning on it. But for some, you must know the shape. So for example, on the road connection, they might put the picture for the no entry and do and block out the words and ask you, what does this sign mean? So you must know how to um, still identify the sign without the words on it that is explicitly saying what it is, what it stands for. All right, so we see that this one means keep to the left. It means drive in that left um, lane. Um, it says no entry. So you cannot enter on that road. It means that the entrance is some other road. No right turn. You cannot turn right um, at the stoplight or this corner or something like that. Um, for some no right turns, you will see them have a time there. So there's a time period. So like, for example, the one on Devon at Devon House, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that one. Um, it says no right turn between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Mondays to Friday. So that means anytime after that, anytime around that, you can make the right turn. So a lot of times you see no U-turn, even though people still make it, but I mean, it's there for safety and we must know how the sign looks. So it, it has a, a kind of hook sign with a with the bar sign over it. And then you have keep right, similar to keep left. And you have the two way, and you also have the one way sign, which is indicating that, um, you can drive, I mean, you, there, are, there are vehicles coming in opposite directions are, and then if it's a one way, then you know the vehicle is coming in that one direction. And once it's one way, they will show you the direction in which the vehicles are driving on that road. So these are more road signs. And I, I hope I have a, a sample question at the end. I think I do. So you'll have the pedestrian crossing children and all of these they're just going to ask you what they mean and stuff like that what do you do in the event that you see a sign like this and so but this won't i mean in kingston you won't see a sign with the cattle or other animals crossing but once you move outside of kingston getting into clarendon and those places you start to see more signs like this i think if you go up to but that place name again junction junction i'm talking the junction I'm, I'm referring to is the one that you, you take to go to st mary and portland you might see a sign that says falling rocks right so that just means that there's some loose rock or some because you know um once you know all junctions stay you know all junctions stay we have to be careful there And these are more road signs. So this is a stop sign. So you must know how the stop sign look and shape. Like even if the stop not in it, you know said so this sign means stop. 
So this is another sign that's important. It says give way. So once you see that sign, it's it's an it's another stop sign in a sense. Mm -hmm. It's saying to you that once you're coming from this direction, give way to um that's on the other road. Whether it's a major or a minor road, um, give way to that person and then you proceed once the way is clear. But you don't push up yourself and go in front of the people. Now I've seen traffic congestion signs, um, maybe in places like Half Tree and stuff like that, that's highly traversed. And these are more signs. You have the no entry sign. And it means you can't enter. And then you have other specific signs here. No entry for any power-driven vehicle except two-wheeled motor. Um, I've never seen a sign like this specifically in Jamaica, but it's good to still know them. And I've, I've never seen priority road signs and end of priority road signs in Jamaica either. So I don't think that these signs would ever come on your, your road code exam. But it's still good to know them. Because I mean, I would probably ask. And these are more signs. Um, yes, so the no parking sign. So I'm sure many of us would have seen this. I mean, the, if you go downtown, you see it a lot. No parking, no parking, no parking. And um, what that means is that you're not permitted to park in that area. And if you do, the police will put your car on a record and you will just have a figure out where you get back your car. So there are no parking zones for a reason. And then we go through the no right turn and the no left turn, the stop and all of those things. And there are speed limit signs. And of course, you know, um, how the stoplight works, the red, the amber, and the green. I think there's a slide there for that. And there will be some roads that don't allow trucks. And this is an example of the one-way sign. And when you go out of Kingston, you see the, the railroad crossing signs and stuff like that. Um, I've seen rough road signs in Jamaica uh reserve parking for disabled can't park in in that um parking space without a disabled um something to identify that you are a member of the disabled community and these are more road, like the road code sign never ending they are never ending for school and the fact that traffic traffic signals are ahead and workers ahead and um, the road work ahead you guys can just look at these signs and try to and winding road I've seen this in Jamaica as well and this this sign is also important, the lane ends, but it, it becomes more important when you are driving because um, sometimes you drive past signs and, and, and don't even read them. But, you know, once you see this sign, you know that the lane that you're in, if you're in that lane, it's going to end soon. So it's best to try to switch lanes as early as possible. And this slide is just explaining um I'll giving you a little bit more about what the warning signs mean so for example the road ahead curves to the right um because sometimes when you're driving on a road the road has um a weird curve or a sharp there's a sharp turn coming up ahead of you and stuff like that a sharp right turn for example and a sharp bend the signs, please remember to mute. 
Ghana Waha. Please remember to mute your mic. So these signs basically tell a driver that, listen, if you're going fast, you need to slow down because you cannot make a turn when you're going 80 or 100 km, right? So you need to bring that car down to like a 50 or a 40 so that you can turn safely. You only have us like a car, I go, I go make a turn and then you just see the car skid and flip over gun right over the cliff. That, that's maybe because the car is going too fast. And this is the, this, the traffic light. So they will test you on this as well for the road code exam. So they'll ask you what red means and you know it means to stop and you wait behind the stop line. So not in front of it. And you do not go through the intersection. Once it's a red, you just stop your vehicle right before that um, stop line. The, that's the, the white line at the stoplight. And then you have the yellow or the amber, which means stop as well. It, it's, it means slow down in a sense, but it's, it means stop. So you can enter the intersection if you are close um, so that you don't have to make, do a sudden break. But if you're really and truly not close, as most motorists are not, um, don't try to go through it. And the green means you can proceed through the intersection carefully. And you still have to do so with caution, especially if it's a four by four um, intersection. You don't want to be going through the green and somebody else decides to them go and break the, break the red light and just run right into your car. And these are turning arrows and we know that um, the green means you can go, you can make the turn and the red means that even though, and this is a good example. So sometimes the green might be for the, the main traffic, but then you want to make a turn, but your arrow is on red. So true use to the green, you say, all right, I can still go. No, you cannot proceed. You must not turn right until the arrow says green, all right? Or you mustn't turn left or anywhere at all you want to turn. You must wait until that arrow is saying you can proceed. So, I mean, when it's not for exam purposes and you're really and truly on the road and you really want to go where you want to go, um, proceed with caution. All right, so now that we've, completed a little theory um as i said i think there i don't know how many questions i think it's just probably one um but these are directly from our materials so for this one for number one so near a pedestrian crossing when the pedestrians are waiting to cross the road you should and anybody can answer this C. All right, go ahead. C is the answer. A. Answer. B. Who says B? <laughs> All right, so C is the answer. So for number two, the following sign represents. Stop. A. 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 All right, awesome. Okay, so I have more questions. So you can overtake a vehicle in front. What's the answer for nine? C. I think it's A. 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 It's A. 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 Correct. Yes, if you overtake on the right. So number 10, the following sign represents? C. 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 Right. So you turn prohibited. All right, so these are the videos that, um, I said, so we're going to look at the parking video first. So I don't know if, so some of you might be in different stages. Some might just be going to apply for your learners. Some of you might be um, on the know a little thing. So let us know.
study commerce degree. You're welcome to Can't see the video. All right, I'm going to share the screen now. Previous video on how to easily parallel park, I showed you a method which is basically align your mirror with the mirror of the other car, turn the wheel one turn to the right, of the car is in the middle of your window, then turn the wheel completely to the left and back up until you straight. Note that in this video, I'll only be covering the part that has to do with the line. All right, so what we'll be looking at is parallel parking. And parallel parking is one of the more, it's, it's, it is a part of your exam. It's literally a whole section to itself. It's in the yard test. You must parallel park twice in order to um, pass your exam. Whether it is you're going for a private or a general license. So parallel parking is, it, it can be difficult because, I mean, you have two vehicles, one in front of you and one behind you, and you must fit your car in between the two without hitting. So there is a particular way, there's a technique um, in how you do this. So watch the pay close attention. You line up your vehicle in a particular way right beside one of the cars. And then you can just watch and see what he does next. Aligning yourself properly with the other car. If you want to see the whole technique, the original clicking on the link in the notes. So in that video, I recommend you align the mirrors as a starting point. Now, some people will tell you that you should align the rear bumpers instead of the mirrors. And that is absolutely true. The thing is, if you park the rear bumpers will also be aligned. The reason why I tell you to align the mirrors instead of the bumpers is because from the perspective behind the wheel, it's a lot easier to align the mirrors because you can actually see them, but you can't see the rear bumpers. So even for experienced drivers, aligning the rear bumpers is a lot harder. Now, a question I get all the time is, will this technique work for a bigger or smaller car? The answer is yes, but you'll need to make some adjustments. With this technique, there are two main reference points that you can use that will determine your distance from the curb when you back up. Aligning your mirror with the other car's mirror or aligning the other car's plate in your window. You can use either one of them. If you want to use the mirrors, here's what you do. If your car is longer than the car you're aligning yourself with, instead of aligning the mirrors at the same level, align it a bit past the other car's mirror. If your car is smaller, align the mirror a bit before the other car's mirror. Turn the wheel one turn to the right, then back up and align the other car's plate in the middle of your window, turn the wheel completely to the left, and back up until you fit in the spot. If you choose to use the plate as the reference point, start with the mirrors aligned no matter the size of your car, turn the wheel one turn to the right and back up. With same sized cars, you will align the plate in the middle of the window. If your car is longer, align the plate more towards the right of the window. If it's smaller, align it more towards the left side of the window. Then turn the wheel completely to the left and back up until the car is straight. Whether you choose the mirror or the plate to align yourself, find the reference point that works for your car and always use that same reference point afterwards. And like I said in another video, use anything you can as a reference point. The right reference for your car might be to align the button to open the window with the other car's plate or that hole to grab the door right here or anything else. If that works better for you, use it. Note that if you're parking in a very tight spot, there will be more steps involved. I'll cover that in a future video. But for now, I hope you like this one. Feel free to like and subscribe. Don't hesitate to ask any questions in the comments. And thanks for watching. All right. So I hope that that video was somewhat helpful, um, especially when it comes on to parallel parking. So... The reference points for parallel parking, it's, it's what is important. You must um, know the steps, um, use the steps when you're doing the exam as well. Uh, and it really helps. Is the steps going to carry you through sometimes? Even as an experienced driver, when you have to parallel park, you literally line up your car with the other car and then you're like, okay. And then you back up, you turn, you, you, you turn your steering wheel and you start backing up until you can see the license plate, and then you, you take out that lock and you turn again. 
So if they, these little steps, you know, they, they help you. So we're going to watch the other video. Welcome to University Canada West. If you're trying to pick a specific... And it's reversing. And reversing is um important section of your driving exam, both for the private and the general. So in for reversing uh, for the you'll have to reverse through a series of cones and stuff like that to go back. It's kind of on a curve. Um, but we'll just look, look at this. I think you'll be reverse parking, which is very much useful. It will be useful to you, um, especially when you become drivers. Body, I'm here today to show you how to steer a car in reverse. It's actually really simple, but many people find captive. So I'm going to show you a few things that will make it really, really easy. Let's get right to it. As you can see, here's the steering wheel. We're looking in front of us. Think in reverse. However, when you're actually reversing, you're going to be looking behind you. But when you're thinking about it, you're looking ahead of you. So I'm looking in front of myself. Let's say I'm just steering to the left and when I'm looking in front to my left that's the way I want to reverse to my left when I'm looking in front so don't be in reverse okay I'm going to turn the steering wheel to the left when I'm reversing pretty simple and I'll show you how much to turn the steering wheel. just a few more let's say I want to steer to the right when I'm reversing which is when I'm looking at to my right when I'm reversing to that side I'm going to wheel to the right it's literally that simple so just to clarify i'm going to put the car in reverse if i wanted to go this way to my left i'm going to turn the steering wheel to the left as i reverse turn my head look back this okay let's move back forward right here once again if i wanted to go to the right which is that way when i reverse i'm going to turn the steering wheel to the right as i reverse just like that Literally that simple. And I'm going this way when I reverse. Now, the wheel is a whole different story. I'm going to move ahead over here. Now, let me explain this. When you are turning your steering wheel and going in reverse, the front wheels are turning and you're going in reverse. So that means that because you're going in reverse and the front wheels are turning, it's like the opposite of the directional wheel. Okay? So, like this direction but those wheels are turning so that means that when you turn the steering wheel a little bit you're going to get a very sharp turn so let me just demonstrate right now if i put it in reverse and i just turn the steering wheel half a turn okay you'll see that i'm literally going to be doing a fairly sharp turn if i turn the steering wheel a full i'm going to be doing an extremely sharp turn okay now that's because like i said the opposite of the directional wheels are turning now here's another Another thing to keep in mind when you're steering in reverse. When you turn the wheel and you reverse, your front end of your car will end up swinging out. Let me explain myself. If I put the car in reverse and I turn the steering wheel all the way, let's say I want to make a really sharp turn to my left. I'm going to turn it all the way to the left. And I reverse now. You'll notice, you can understand this in the video, the front end of my car is swinging out. Swinging out. So that means that when you are going in reverse, the sharper that you turn the steering wheel, the more that you turn the steering wheel, the more that your front end of your car will swing out. So if you're reversing, you should not, you know, you should keep that in mind so that you don't actually hit any cars. Now, I'm going to show you one last thing before I finish this video. I'm going to pull in beside this car right here. So right now, and you can't see this, I'm beside a car. I parked beside a car. The car is right there where the camera is. If I wanted to reverse, and I wanted to turn the steering wheel like this to my left, my front end is going to swing out the opposite way. If I turn the steering wheel to the left, my front end is going to swing out to the right. If I turned it all the way like this, my front end would probably swipe that car and hit that car. So when you're reversing out of a parking spot, don't turn the steering wheel all the way. Just turn it a little bit. Make your way out. Turn it a bit more. Make your way out. Once you clear the car, so right now I've cleared the car, that was my windshield wipers, not me hitting the car. Now that I've cleared the car, I can turn the steering wheel all the way. And then you can allow your front end to swing out because you've cleared the car. You're not going to hit it. Now I'm going to park beside my car and wait for roll. 
So that's basically it. Steering in reverse is actually really simple. I've outlined pretty much all of the aspects. I've outlined making slight turns, the direction that you should turn the steering wheel. All right, so that was steering in reverse, and that's very important um, when driving because as he demonstrated, if you're in a parking lot and if you just decide to turn with your whole um, lock, then you can hit somebody's vehicle. So you have to know how to control the car that you're driving and stuff like that, especially when it comes on to when it comes on to um, reversing and you're reversing through that um, curved lane that they've designed for your exam. You need to know that if you're putting this lock, this is how much you're going to get out of it and stuff like that. Because remember that the car is a robot and it's however you program or operate that robot to, to work. That's how, that's what you get out of it. So you must know um, the, the different ways in which the car will operate. So remember um, all the things that we offer at Mother Teresa Driving Academy. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you have any questions, you can definitely ask. We have four minutes um, remaining for the class. I'll stay on. This is our contact number. You can send us a WhatsApp if you're interested in getting the materials. Um, we have people who have decided to to just sign up to get the discounted package. So we have a discounted package going on now for $12,000 for the automatic um, package where you get 10 lessons on the free materials. You can sign up for that package and get access to the free materials. And once you get your learners, then you can start your, your lessons and stuff like that. So, or if you decide to just, um, if you just want the materials, we also have those. For two thousand dollars, you can just send us a message and connect with us. So our email address is mtdrivingja at gmail.com. So feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're always willing to help you. We were designed as a as a driving academy to really help. That's the reason why we came up with the name Mother Teresa, because we're very philanthropic. You know, we want to help. Jamaicans achieve the best um, the best service when it comes on to driver education. I know it takes a lot of guidance and stuff like that, and we don't want it to be a lonely road for you. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. Um, I like to. I saw on the slide that you mentioned fifteen percent off for. Um, MT car dealers, who are you guys in partnership with in terms of the deals, car, car dealers? Yeah. Okay, so in terms of the car dealers, so we have, well, uh, you can actually send us an email and we can email you that list because it's a long list of dealers. We kind of reached out to almost, reached out to almost um, all the dealerships. So not the, not the dealers like Volkswagen, and our stores auto um but you know the other dealers that import vehicles mm -hmm. from japan yes so we we have um quite a number of partnerships with those dealers and their 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 cars are very affordable okay okay so um would i need proof that i have signed up with you guys i go hold that go if I... Yes, yes. So once it is that you've signed up with us and you, you're a part of the MT family, you will have access to that. You have access to, to the 15% discount. Okay. All right. Hold on, what's your name? I'm Lenika Roden. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi, Lenika. 
Um, I'm Shirley and I'm from Clarendon. How oh, soon will your oh, services be offered in Clarendon? I already oh. have my provisional license. I was getting some practice driving, but because of the corona, the person had stopped. Had stopped. Okay. Yes, I want. I want. Um, I've been interested since you first um sent out the flyer. Yeah. But. Uh, I never heard anything more about you guys. So, so since I saw you now, I'm really interested. But I'm in Clarendon. In Clarendon. All right. So in terms of expanding, so we are hoping to expand and I'm going to commit to it by the third week of August. We okay. should expand to Clarendon, Mandeville, and St. Elizabeth. Okay, so I, I, if I wanted to um, grab the discount now, can I pay from now? Yes, or? you can. So, we off, so you can pay online. Yes. So just send us a WhatsApp and okay. we'll send you the, the bank details and you can make the transfer and we'll send you your invoice um, via email along yes. with the materials um, so you can... What you say? Yeah, I have your members yeah. already. So yes. we'll send you the So yes. we'll still send you the materials. Okay, then. All right, thank you. No problem. Hi. Hello. I'm Elisa Butler. Hold on, I can hardly hear you. You said there's a discount and package now for 12 minutes for offering 10 minutes. Oh, if we're offering discounts in what? The package that you said that you have going now for 12000 Yeah. Is that um, in preparation for the road code test? So um, the package for 12000 that would be um, the regular package. So you'll get the materials that can help prepare you for the road code test. So I always encourage people to, to not just buy the materials alone for 2000 I think you get more value for your money if you pay, pay for the discounted package now and get the free materials that come with it. And then you can schedule your lessons um, once, you, once you pass your road code exam. And of course, you'll have access to, so we plan to do more online classes like these. So we'll try to have one once a month so you'll get access to classes like these where we'll help you to prepare for that exam as well. All right, thank you. No problem. Hi. Hello. How long does the special last for? So we're going up until the second week of August for the special. All right, thanks. So that's about three more weeks. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. So we have office hours every Friday and Saturday at Pegasus Hotel. I'm not, I'm not sure if you guys follow us on social media, um, but once you send us a WhatsApp or email or you start connecting with us, um, we usually make we usually ensure that we communicate those information when we, when we have office hours or you can just um as i said we have online transfers available and uh, we can arrange to meet otherwise outside of office hours if it is that you want to register urgently how long per class Five minutes to one hour and how many do you get for the, the special? For the special, you get 10 lessons. And those 10 lessons are, are, are adequate, you know, I, I must say. So we designed a lesson. So all of our instructors, they have a lesson plan, a guide that guides them as to how those 10 lessons should be allocated in terms of the different sections of your exam and preparing for the road. So those 10 lessons are more than adequate. By the time you, you, you get to the, the sixth or seventh lesson, or seventh lesson, you'll be ready, more than ready to take the exam. So the other lessons are just you revising or you doing what you want to do on the road with the instructor's car. 
question are there any payment plans for the special or you just have to pay the one price up front excuse me please the one price um up front for the special excuse me dear how many lessons um before i get my my license